Following an outbreak in Congo and a growing number of countries in Africa, the Director General of the World Health Organization has declared monkeypox an international public health emergency. The director said, quote, the emergence of the new version or clade of MPOX was, quote, very worrying and has made it clear that a coordinated international response is needed to stop these outbreaks and save lives. The version has also been discovered in Thailand and Sweden. Monkeypox is a virus part of the same family that causes smallpox and can be spread between animals and people. People with MPOX commonly get a rash that goes through several stages, including scabs, before healing. Joining us now to discuss it all is CDC Incident Manager of the 2024 Clade 1 Monkey Pox Response Team, Dr. Jennifer McQuiston. Dr. McQuiston, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how concerned should people be about this latest outbreak? I think the CDC is following this outbreak closely, but the truth of the matter is there have been no clade one or one B cases of MPOX found in the United States. And we're actively looking at all of the MPOX that we see in the United States to see which clade it is. So right now, this new type of MPOX that is spreading in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and some of the neighboring countries is not uh, posing a, a high risk to the American public. And so this is something, help us understand the difference between this version of monkeypox and the original monkeypox that was going around just a couple years ago. Sure. And um, the, the official name of the disease has been changed to MPOX. So if you hear me refer to it that way, that's what I'm referring to. The virus is still called the monkeypox virus. So you may hear it referred to a couple different ways. So um, the monkeypox virus is a virus that has sort of evolved over the years to have different types of clades, we call them. So in some parts of Africa, there is a clade two version and what's happening in the Democratic Republic of the Congo right now is clade one mpox. What started to circulate around the world back in 2022 and actually had a big global outbreak was uh, clade two mpox. And for the most part, that is a, a type of MPOX that is milder. Um, it tends to uh, be self-limiting, meaning that when people get it, they're able to recover um, you know, uh, over a brief period of time. Um, and we expect to see much lower case fatality rates associated with clade one MPOX. Now what's spreading in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is clade one MPOX. Historically, that's been a more severe form of the virus, and we typically think of it as having a higher proportion of patients with maybe a severe course of illness, and we do expect to see more deaths associated with it. Um, the good news is the really um, sort of subclade that is uh, spreading right now is called clade 1B. For the most part, it's had a fairly low case fatality rate, which I think is good. If that's the version that's beginning to spread more widely, um, uh, we are hopeful that that means that it might end up being a bit milder. Two questions for you. The first is why was the name changed from monkeypox to mpox, just so our viewers understand that. And then the second is how does this virus spread and what can people do to prevent themselves from potentially catching it? Sure. So the name of the disease was changed, I really think, because the original name monkeypox was a misnomer. So this is not a virus that naturally occurs in monkeys or apes or anything like that, but it was originally found and discovered in a research colony of um, monkeys many, many years ago. But the truth of the matter is it circulates in jungles and in wild animals, most likely some kind of a rodent or a rat or a squirrel. Um, so the name monkeypox was was already a, a misnomer. Um, and at the same time, I think that it's recognized that because it's spreading person to person, when you put that that animal name in there, it can be a little stigmatizing. So this is really spreading person to person um, right now, and it's got nothing to do with monkeys. And I think that's why the name was um, was wanted to be changed to avoid sort of that stigma. In terms of how it's spreading right now, um, you know, I do think that in parts of Africa where this disease occurs naturally in wildlife, it can spread between uh, those animals and people if they're hunting them um, or if they're living in really close contact with them. But right now what's happening is it's spreading person to person. Um, it is direct skin on skin contact is the way this virus spreads. Um, it can be spread sexually or through intimate contact. And I think we saw that as the, the main way it spread around the world back in 2022. 
Um, in the D Democratic Republic of the Congo right now, we are also seeing household spread. So that means there might be some sexual spread happening among adults, but if an adult with MPOX brings it into the house and they have very close contact with children, with people living in the house, any kind of direct skin to skin contact, it can spread that way as well. So I travel a lot and I know that it's typically the, the brushing of the skin directly is wearing long sleeves while getting on close quarters travel, like a plane or a bus, something people can do to prevent it if they're really risk averse with this virus? We've never seen impox spread by sitting next to someone on an airplane. And there were a lot of impox um, cases that did, did end up traveling by air when they might have had lesions during the 2022 outbreak, which is still ongoing, by the way. That clade two outbreak is still um, occurring, including in the United States at low levels. Um, I actually just went on a flight to Kinshasa. I was working there um, to understand the outbreak and maybe do some planning. And I was not worried on the plane. I'm not vaccinated. Um, I interacted with colleagues. I know that this is occurring really in close contact household settings. Um, and that is, is really how it's spreading. That leads me to an interesting follow up. I'm curious, you talked about the potential animal to human spread. What kind of close contact are people having with or prolonged close contact that people in the Congo are having with animals that would cause that to happen. I mean, if you've if you've ever been to uh, a place like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, you know, Kinshasa is a big urban city. Like there aren't a lot of wildlife, um, not a lot of animals there. But when you go out into the more rural parts of the country, people are living in villages that really border jungles. And in the forested parts of the country, um, people are often hunting in that jungle, in the bush uh, for protein for their families. And so the types of animals they might be hunting might be squirrels or wild rodents that live in the jungle. And that is a way that you can come in contact with this virus and contract it. It's very interesting. So the lesions are what a lot of people know symptomatically as associated with this virus. Are there other symptoms that are concerning uh, around this virus potentially becoming more deadly? So, um, Impox has a lot of symptoms. I think the rash is the one most people know about and think about. It is a very distinctive rash. It doesn't look like measles. Um, some people might confuse chicken pox with it, but it, it, it looks different. So somebody who's experienced with seeing patients will know what it, what it is when they see it. Um, but there are other symptoms that people get too. You can get a very high fever. You can get swollen lymph nodes, especially the lymph nodes in the neck. And sometimes those lymph nodes can get so swollen that people have trouble swallowing or even breathing. Um, that's not a super common symptom, but that, that can happen. Um, and I also wanna say that, you know, the question is why could this be deadly? It's just a rash, it's just a skin disease, but, um, that rash can appear um, inside the mouth or in the throat as well. And you can imagine that if someone has those lesions in the mouth or throat, it's very difficult for them to swallow and eat or drink, and they could get dehydrated really quickly. And that could contribute to maybe a severe outcome or even death. And I also think if people get this rash over a large part of their body and they're living in a part of the world where maybe they don't have access to running water or soap, they could get secondary bacterial infections in those rash lesions. And so I think that is one of the reasons why you can get a fatal outcome there too. I want to quickly ask you about the vaccine as well. There is a vaccine we have now. If someone's had the smallpox vaccine, is it true what I've heard that that does have some partial you know, coverage or preventative effect for mpox? So the way we protect against orthopox viruses of any type it is through the same vaccine that we use to eradicate smallpox. So um, people who previously received a smallpox vaccine, um, and they would know that because they have a scar on their arm, um, because the, the way the vaccine works, it creates a little scar on the arm. They might have some residual protection, even if they got that vaccine as a child. Um, but I do think that vaccine is really important because the world stopped vaccinating for smallpox in the late 1970s and it was declared eradicated around 1980. I am one of the first generation of kids in the United States that never got a smallpox vaccine, for example. So what we have is a population around the world that is increasingly not protected against something like smallpox or mpox and getting vaccine out into the countries where this is starting to spread and making sure that it's, it's part of their plan to control the disease is really important. The New York Times reported back in 2022 that a lot of the cases of monkeypox in the United States were clustered around uh, 
men who have sex with men. Is it still the case that this is disproportionately affecting the gay community? Um, and what has been done to make sure that if that's the case, that they're aware that this new outbreak is happening? So the Clade 2B outbreak that started in 2022 and is ongoing today, spread around the world, it did predominantly affect um, men who have sex with men, uh, men who were bisexual. And I think it had to do more with the sexual networks. They were sort of these um, tight and, um, and often multiple partner sexual networks. People who had those particular behaviors were at increased risk for MPOX during that outbreak. We don't know yet whether that same sexual network is going to be at particular risk for clade one B should it start to circulate in the United States, but we think we think that they will be at increased risk. Um, whether other people may be at increased risk, I think we're not quite sure yet. Um, and I think that we're trying to learn all we can in the Democratic Republic of Congo so we can give people all the information they need. I will say that sexual spread is happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It includes not only MSM, um, but it also includes um, uh, people who identify as heterosexual. So there are men and women being infected with MPOX um, through sexual contact in the DRC. And I think that we need to kind of watch that and see, see what happens. Thank you, Dr. McQuiston. Unfortunately, we have to wrap, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.